Welcome back guys. I'm Christian Beyer coming to you from the favorite Caterpillar dealership shop here in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Today, I would like to share with you guys the first tool haul of 2020. I brought a few new things over the holidays. All right, let's get started. So, first thing I got was a set of Sunix impact torque sockets. I picked this set up on Amazon. I believe it was about 25, maybe 35 bucks. Um, it goes from T10 up to T60. So the reason for me getting these, um, I have the regular chrome socket uh, Torx bits, but I just don't like running chrome in my uh, on my impacts. Um, I really like using the right tool for the right job, and that includes with my sockets. I like running impact sockets for impacts, and you know chrome sockets for ratchets. So. I picked these up real cheap. Um, I did. I have had most of this stuff for a couple of weeks already, so uh, I've gotten to use it a little bit. I used the T30 the other day, taking a cab apart. Um, I do know I read on the reviews a bunch of complaints about uh, people, or a handful of complaints. They were reviewed really well, but there was a handful of complaints about them breaking off. Uh, I honestly believe that was from guys using them with ratchets, which if you're using a Chrome Molly, um, a bit socket you know like a torx or a, a hex bit socket um, and it's an impact rated one it's softer and it's not meant to be used with a ratchet so i believe that was what was going on there i don't think i'll have a problem with them obviously this isn't a review and maybe we will review these eventually but for now they are doing really well um i really think i'll enjoy those and i think they'll suit me well the other thing the next thing i should say the only thing I actually got off the tool truck out of this tool haul was these uh, magnetic extensions. Apparently they only make them in these couple of sizes. I have a quarter drive and a three eighths drive. What they have on the end of them is just a little magnet off of the extension and it reaches through most sockets. It doesn't work with every socket I have, but obviously uh, shallow sockets pretty much only. And then uh, down to maybe five or six millimeter uh, quarter drive I noticed uh, even on the snap-on sockets it'll only go through uh, like down to the six millimeter uh, socket and the hole drilled through the middle of the socket just is too small anything smaller than that so um, I did play around with them a little bit um, I was looking for 12 point magnetic sockets and if anybody knows of anything out there that'd be a 12 point magnetic socket uh, hit me up in the comments down below um, I know in our transmission rebuilds, like these haul truck transmission rebuilds that I've been doing, I have a set of 12 point bolts. They're like 5 16 bolts and they're down, you know, 8 or 10 inches into the transmission planetary set and you have to, you know, start the bolt, thread the bolt down in there. Um, I've been using a little handheld magnet, but just putting the bolt on the end of it and running it in there. So that's worked, but like I said, I like using the right tool for the right job. So. I picked these up. I'm going to try these out, see if they work for what I need. Uh, if not, then I might have to uh, do some more research or find something different. But uh, the method I've been using is okay, but the more secure the method, uh, the better I feel reaching down inside a transmission planetary while I'm putting it together. So enough on that. Uh, the next thing I got wasn't so much for uh the machines here at work um i believe the 20 millimeter will actually work but what i have here are uh, o2 sensor um bung rethreaders so this is a 20 millimeter by one and a half an 18 millimeter by one and a half and a 14 millimeter by 125 i believe it doesn't say on this one um not too hot on this design here they're actually a one piece um I did think, and then they have this little O-ring on here that you can uh, put a socket over and it should stay on there. Uh, the reason I got these is you can use a regular tap, but I've found a couple of situations where like on exhaust, a regular tap and a tap socket is just too long to fit in around the exhaust. So I figured that these being a little shorter might work a little better. And I know a lot of times when I pull out O2 sensors, they're just kind of gunked up and I'd like to re-thread them before I put the new ones in there. So. Um, 
this I may end up cutting off uh, right in this o-ring groove so I have so I have two separate um, uh, re-threaders but uh, we'll see with when the time comes to use those so I picked those up they're a uh, Lyle tool I believe um, and they're really pretty cheap uh, five or six bucks a piece so nothing too crazy next thing I picked up this is a gear wrench tool uh, the part number is 41720 for this whole kit. What this is is an O2 sensor uh, socket kit. It is an eight piece kit. I believe there's a handful of other kits out there that are like eight and nine piece kits. Uh, I picked this one up uh, because, you know, even on the CAD equipment we run into, I believe it's this 22 millimeter. Um, you know a few different you know a few different places and so even just working on the odds and ends on vehicles and stuff i figured it'd be nice to have a nice full set of uh, sensor sockets here and uh just have the right tool for the job again so pick that up maybe 35 bucks on amazon something like that um I, you know a lot of a lot of this stuff was actually purchased on amazon so i will leave links to all of it down in the description if you guys would like to check it out this is one thing it was not uh, purchased off of Amazon. It wasn't purchased at all, actually. Um, it is a Bluebird made in the USA number 010. Um, obviously, they're steel shears and quite old ones. If you can see, there's some pitting in them and whatnot. Um, I got these actually from my grandpa and they were blue originally right up where the black paint is and obviously it I sandblasted them uh, cleaned them up real good, oiled them real good, and then I repainted the handles black. Um, just, you know, more of a sentimental thing. Uh, he gave them to me, so I cleaned them up and figured I'll throw them in the box and uh, it'll be something that maybe I have a use for and maybe I don't. So, just kind of something cool there. And the next thing I picked up is the Load Pro. Um, these are made by Electronic Specialties. I believe actually Cat even recommends using these. So um, old school way of doing this test would be like with a random light bulb with a couple of leads off of it. Uh, just when you're doing your voltage drop test, you can put this in your system, in your circuit, and uh, check for um, you know those tricky little cases where you have a wire that's almost all the way broken off or almost all the way corroded off. And you got one strand left there. So uh, this will help out with that. Uh, make sure you can uh, put some load on your circuit by hitting this bump or this button i believe it's uh 25 ohms i believe is what it is i'd have to look again um you can either use them as regular test leads or once you hit that button puts the load on your circuit and you can make sure you can watch on your uh, multimeter obviously they plug into your multimeter and you can watch on there and make sure that you're not uh, having a voltage drop across that circuit so handy tool there i believe it was like 45 bucks something like that again um so I've run into a couple of situations like that in the past and found those, uh, found that set of leads and it was just something that I really uh, thought would be useful. So I picked them up. Next thing that was extremely useful, I think I've used more uh, than anything here, um, is this flexible magnet. I don't actually know if it has a brand name. I know one of the other guys I work with has the identical one that he picked up at some tool show or something. Um, it's a 10 pound magnet on one end and then obviously a form flex uh, handle on it which is super nice because you know that random time and I've actually had to use it it was about like that right there to reach up in somewhere and form and hold something in place so either hold something in place or grab something whatever obviously what are the normal uses of a magnet are but um, the form to it is just super nice I actually um, have one of the grabby the pickup tools uh, that has the same thing. It's a blue point tool. I'm sure obviously somebody else makes it because it's blue point, but I picked it up off the snap on truck a while back and it has the same um, form, form to fit uh, flex, flexible neck on it. So super handy tool. Uh, I was looking for a flexible one and I didn't want that typical aluminum one that a lot of guys have, or at least I see a lot of guys have. Uh, and I found this and I really like this. I've used it a handful of times already and it's been uh, really useful. So really like that. Now, for those of you that have been following me since the beginning of the channel, what, a month ago or so, you may have seen one of my videos, I made this tool. Uh, this was, uh, the hose and the end on here was off of my stant uh, 
cooling system pressure tester kit. I actually removed this off of there. I picked up this uh, air regulator on Amazon and then picked up these fittings and I actually replaced the uh, 230 PSI gauge on here with a PIC 60 um, pound gauge on it because my cooling systems obviously don't need to go above 20, 25 PSI. So pick this up and now I have a pneumatic cooling system pressure tester. Um, I used this already a few times and this thing's super handy, super quick to pressure test my cooling system. So really handy tool and really it not necessarily something I bought or you know at least not as a whole. Um, but I put that together and that thing's really been working out. Another area that I was really lacking in as far as tools was air tools, uh, not pneumatic tools, but air filling tools and air pressure gauges and things. So uh, I was asking around and one of the struggles we have here in the shop is working on this CAT equipment is most of the tires that we work on have large bore air uh, adapters on them. So versus your standard bore that you'd see on the on the vehicles your valve stems on the heavy equipment are large bore and i don't remember exactly what the bore size is but it's about twice the size of what's on your normal vehicle so i was asking a couple of guys to see if they knew any companies that had a air gauge that had a large bore end on it and one of the guys obviously suggested milton industries um, I'd never really done much with as far as tire tools or anything like that, so I wasn't aware of Milton Industries, but I looked into them, and they are apparently a very uh, well-renowned tire tool brand, um, and so I ordered up one of these uh, pistol grip tire filling tools, um, I guess is the best way to sum it up. It has a 15-inch air hose on it, comes with this end on it swivel gauge on the top of it and then your air release in the back now i pulled this thing out of the package and immediately i was like holy cow first of all this gauge is really well protected with this really flexible um squishy rubber gasket i guess around it that just protects it uh from you know your normal drops and you know banging around and things so the biggest thing that impressed me though was the handle. I believe the handle is solid aluminum or cast aluminum and it has a, or like a rubberized coating on it. So it's kind of got a textured feel to it to grip to, but it's super, super heavy duty um, versus a lot of just normal little plastic ones that are just, I'm not a fan of. So right away, I was super impressed with that. Really good reviews on all of them. Obviously it has a swivel end on it. The one thing that it did not come with was the locking large bore end on it so i actually purchased this separate on amazon um, and i uh, installed this on the end here so now it has this locking end on it you know, if you can see so it can lock on there because of the volume of air that these tires take it's just a lot of it's a pain in the ass to just hold it on there the whole time so a lot of times i can just clip this on put a zip tie on here and just let it go for a while until it's getting close to where i need it to be so um really handy tool i've actually used this a handful of times already uh worked out super slick and i'm really impressed with this so obviously this last tool has a tire gauge on it uh pressure gauge but if i'm just checking uh pressure in the tires right here i picked up the milton zero to 160 psi uh just your standard stick gauge now these things are impressively heavy duty uh this one is the large bore one uh, it has the aluminum uh, gauge in it. It actually comes with its own calibrating uh, tool right here. So you can calibrate it uh, to the right pressure. So I believe they are maybe 25 bucks a piece. I got the large bore and the small bore. So now I have both of them. So that really kind of set me up good for my tire pressure uh, tooling. And I really like um, what I've seen out of them so far. So. That is what I got for tools. Um, you know, I guess I'll probably do some tool reviews in the future on some of this newer stuff that I'm buying. I have some tool reviews planned on some of the stuff I already have and have been using for quite a long time. Um, and that'll all be coming up in the future. As for now, thank you for watching this tool haul. I hope you enjoyed it. 
Obviously, if you have questions, leave them down in the comment section. Uh, I love to get back to the people. Um, I will leave links to all these tools that I bought off of Amazon in the description for you guys to look at and purchase. So, thanks again for watching. That's what I got for you today. Christian Buyer signing out. Hey guys, subscribe if you want more content. It's appreciated.